Welcome back. We now give you the details of the top stories. I'm Randall Jamias. With the theme Partnerships for Action, Implementation, and Success, the Ministry of National Planning and Economic Development organized first Myanmar Development Cooperation Forum at MICT in Nipito on 19th January. President Uten Sein delivered inaugural address saying that the government has placed a great deal of emphasis on reforms geared towards political liberalization and national reconciliation during its initial stage. The government is currently assembling the National Comprehensive Development Plan, or NCDP, which consists of a set of four five-year plans covering a 20-year period from 2011 to 2031 as part of the second stage of the reform process to enhance economic development and raise the living standard of Myanmar people. He expressed hope to discuss the reforms strategies and the long-term development plans for all to move forward. The government will adopt a people-centered approach in line with the Framework on Economic and Social Reform, or FESR, in 10 priority areas, such as finance and revenue, relaxation of restrictions on trade and foreign investment, development of the private sector, education and health sector, food security and development of agricultural sector, transparency in government, the mobile phone and internet system, and development of the basic infrastructures. The government has undertaken various reforms over the past 21 months. Because of these reforms, the international community has made significant changes in their respective policies towards Myanmar, most visibly in the last six months. This forum is being held mainly for international donors who wish to help and partner with Myanmar to inform them of the priority sectors and areas in the country's reform strategies and development plans. The government's economic policies will focus on the development of the agricultural sector, creation of a modern industrialized country, narrowing the development gap between states and regions, as well as urban and rural areas, establishing an accurate and reliable statistical database and improving the statistical data collection system. In order to ensure the effectiveness of the development assistance, the government will institute a monitoring and evaluation mechanism. The government will also try to make the development assistance more effective by regularly sharing information and programs with development partners. The NAPITO Accord will be adopted to ensure effective cooperation between the government and the development partners. If the government could manage the development assistance, low interest or interest-free loans, and foreign direct investment properly, systematically and transparently, the donors will be more encouraged to continue the partnership. It will be able to achieve the development goals, improve the standard of living of the citizens, and raise the capacity of human resources in the country. Only when the country is peaceful and stable can it achieve socioeconomic development. Similarly, only when the country is socioeconomically developed will the country be peaceful and stable. On the basis of the principle of unity and diversity, differences have to be embraced while working together on areas that agree on. It needs to try patiently to reconcile the differences until a common ground was found. Concerted efforts have to be made to achieve national reconciliation. In order to ensure peace and stability, the government will continue to do everything necessary to turn ceasefire agreements into lasting peace. It is very important to create job opportunities in order to improve socioeconomic conditions of displaced people and ceasefire groups. Myanmar Peace Center was established in Yangon to undertake peace-building activities effectively. He expressed gratitude towards all donor countries and organizations that have contributed peace-building process. Regarding peace negotiations with the Kachin Independence Organization, or KIO, the government will continue to achieve genuine peace in the country. Political dialogue will start with all 10 major ethnic armed groups that have concluded ceasefire agreements with the government. He added that an invitation was extended to KIO to join the peace meeting. He expressed his belief that KIO will soon join in the peace process, adding that the order was given to the Tamado and other relevant government agencies to seek a peaceful solution to the conflict. He noted that KIO will need to reciprocate in a similar way. The government will also undertake census collection in 2014. This will be the first census to be collected in the last three decades. He requested international partners to help with the census collection in any way they can. 
In conclusion, the President invited development partners and representatives of international organizations to make comments, give advice, and share their wealth of experience for the development of the nation without any reservation. Union Minister Dr. Tanzo chaired the second session with the topic on national development priorities and plans, where Deputy Minister Usi Ang presented Myanmar Perspective Plan and Short Term Plan, and Dr. Zhou Wu of Myanmar Development and Research Institute on the Framework for Economic and Social Reform. For the third session, Utin Tut Wu, Chairman of National Economic and Social Advisory Council, or NISAC, chaired the meeting where Dr. Cho Yin Lang of NISAC presented Promoting a Culture of Democracy and Building National Harmony. It was followed by sessions relating on education and culture, agriculture and livelihood, environment, employment, industry and trade, hotels and tourism, electricity, as well as health and water supply, communication and information, transport, social welfare and disaster risk reduction, public administration reform, and territorial development. Hello, Ninglaba. Good morning. Yes, so now that is the uh, first Myanmar Development Cooperation Forum. What did you find on the forum? Uh, the forum that started this morning is an exciting uh, and important moment. It's the first uh, uh, development forum, as, as I understand it, which includes, of course, the international community, of course, the national partners, the parliament, and the UN system. And uh, on behalf of UN Women, we are delighted to be here at this historic moment. And we're very encouraged that the, all of the presentations this morning spoke about the importance of women's empowerment and gender equality, as well, of course, as the, uh, the development of the economy and inclusive growth. So this will be important in all spheres, in the social sphere, in the political sphere, in the economic sphere, in the public administration sphere, as was pointed out this morning uh, by the governmental officials. And that reform is going to be important to create the environment, the culture of democracy, which was spoken of this morning, the culture of bureaucratic efficiency, uh, strengthening the culture of people's participation and consultation in the development of the country, all of which seem to be the priorities of the government. And of course, our uh, UN women would be, uh, of course, anxious and uh, to support. When we talk about democratic culture, uh, we're talking about political participation as well as the political tolerance. So the level of political participation and the level of political tolerance, those are the two variables we need to take into account. But uh, uh, with regard to political participation, it has improved significantly since this new government came into being. But at the same time, uh, like you know, the level is very high in urban areas, but relatively quite uh, low in rural areas and then also in ethnic minority areas. I mean, even though it has improved significantly, we still have a long way to go to get to the level of other consolidated democracies. In honor of the attendees, Union Minister for National Planning and Economic Development, Dr. Kanzo, hosted a gala dinner at Tindaha Hotel. Morning's coming up. Please stay tuned.